to brief the House on what he saw in Kenya, where Kenyan public are beating up members of parliament for passing bad laws. Honorable uh, leader. have taken advantage to advise us as to how to pass good laws to avoid being beaten by the public. We should be worried. In fact, when I saw him running and the police were ushering him, I mean, I mean, through a tunnel, through a tunnel to escape. It's a serious matter. You can see that the Ghanaian MP has care about what Kenya do to their leaders. Now, and Ghanaian MP, the BBC Ghanaian citizen can also do the same. That's that's why now they are they are putting their voice and they are calling out. You see now, only country that can do this thing. Like Ghana. You see that both Kenya do now only Ghana can do it. You see the parliament people coming out, they are talking about it. Because they know say Ghanaians can do that. That's why they are using policies now to be talking about the thing now. Not the one talking CV here. Mr. Manager Nigel, good afternoon. Uh, I'm just watching a program that uh, the Nigeria uh, group and the Ghana group, they are sorting each other, tracking each other. Uh, Nigeria give Ghana light, Nigeria caught its light. Ghana uh, is light off there, they don't have light and whatever it is. Uh, what I want to say to the Nigeria and Ghana, I am not supporting anyone. You understand? I am not supporting anyone. If you look at Africa, from Ghana to Togo, you know how many borders are there? From Ghana to Africa, you know how many borders are there? From Ghana to Nigeria, you know how many borders are there? Africans, we are so... I don't know how I'm going to... I don't know how I have to put it. We don't understand ourselves and always dragging unnecessary things. Unnecessary things. These things is getting hand. It's getting too much. To be honest, I don't like what they are doing in it. Every time Ghana is dragging Nigeria, Nigeria is dragging Ghana on, on just... I, when I'm sitting on, on you, I'm sitting in my room, sometimes when I open my internet, I went to YouTube, when I see this, my heart begin to jump, 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 jump. To be honest, they should stop all these village things. If Nigeria is giving light to Ghana, Nigeria, you have to stop giving Ghana light. And Ghana also, you have to take in Nigeria light. And everybody so that we can have a peace of mind. If your country is good, I am living in Holland. If my country, Ghana, it was good, why I come to Holland? I will, I will, I will, better I will stay in my country, uh, uh, Ghana, because there is my motherland. If my country Nigeria was good, if why me I was why not for me not staying in Nigeria, coming to some one country and dragging every unnecessary things with, with the person. As you know, the beginning I said to you, I don't like what is going on. I know, Mr. Manager, you are a good guy, and also you are doing you try to you know uh, put a peace between both of them by my little opinion is anytime when they send you this kind of insult video dragging each other unnecessary thing then so both of you they don't have nothing better to do dragging their self for jollof rice football and 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 the light and whatever it is now they should wake up and sit down and do something better for for their because if you look at africa all the Africans are going to the Libya, going to other people country, and it's, it's, it's not going good in Africa. Even now, Africa is don't supposed to have any border, but because of misunderstanding, misunderstanding, so uh, uh, they have a lot of borders in Africa. Come to Holland. You know the history of Holland? What Germany did to Holland before. But in Netherlands, it, it, it they, they, for they, 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 they even they know they still know that what Germany did for them. But yet, in Netherlands and Germany, they, they don't have any border that they are giving their their citizen headache. You understand? So, what I want to say to Ghana and Nigeria, what they are doing it, 
uh, to be honest, it, 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 it's, it's not civilized. I'm not supporting Ghana. I'm not supporting na Nigeria. Both of them, they should stop all this thing. And one man, he came and laughed and uh, uh, Nigeria stopped giving Ghana light and this and that and that and that. This all is a, is a stupid thing. If Nigeria gives a Ghana light, Nigeria hold your light. Okay? It's a business. They are doing it. It's a business. Even though you are close to me and we are all Africa. If me, I need gas. You want me to go to America to buy gas for them? So if you give me gas and tomorrow you bluff yourself and this, Nigeria, take your light. Ghana, buy for some, someone else. And you know, Ghana, I'm warning you, if you hold Nigeria money, try to pay your debt to them. Because it's getting too much. Every time dragging unnecessary things. Stop this all narrow thing. Stop it. Because I don't like it. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, everyone. Bye. Uh, Mr. Manager, that when you talk, eh, nobody can build Nigeria here. Yeah? Uh -huh. If they say, me, as a repatriate in Nigeria, as they come back for talking, me they stay in Nigeria, me they build Nigeria. I want to build Nigeria. They build Nigeria with honor and when the Kabaj, the president is in there in charge, they will allow you to build Nigeria. Those who end up building Nigeria, they don't see whether they, they, they carry Buddhas or they demolish that thing. Where I want you in Nigeria from? Now from here? People, you know, people bitch. When they, they, when they build for Lagos, when they, they, they do business, they demolish all of them. They, they say me they build Nigeria. Huh. Nobody go feel build Nigeria. Oh. Nigeria has made to be like this. Uh, if Nigeria has made to be like this. Nobody go feel say they build Nigeria. I want build that pass. When build finish, your carry Buddhas are scattered pretty throw away. Now so they build country for Ghana. Master Niger, listen. Good evening. From Massachusetts, US. You know the problem the Nigeria people have is proudness. That is the big problem. Everyone in this world, if you don't submit yourself to down, it's difficult you can go forward. That is the problem Nigeria people have. Proudness, 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 proudness. I visited Nigeria four months ago. You enter some village, some cities, they don't have type pipe. Town. And I asked myself, why here is Nigeria? I asked one of my friends, I said, here is Nigeria or something like X. And he told me, yeah, this is Nigeria. The only thing I can tell Nigeria is they're supposed to submit themselves down to learning. That is the most important thing about Nigeria. That is only advice I want to give to them. A lot of things is going is going on in Nigeria. If you people didn't submit yourself to down, it's difficult that Nigeria can prosper. And someone can took a lot of maybe ten million people's money, and he can make himself millionaire. And people celebrate, lay down to that person. But your money is that person hold. I didn't respect any Nigeria rich man. It's true. All of them, they use people money. They own their brothers and their sister money. They make themselves rich, and a lot of people have suffer. Every country is suffer, but Nigeria citizen is suffer a lot. When you go deep, deep, deep village in Nigeria, please. When you are in Abuja, Lagos, please just keep quiet. Go deep in Nigeria, you will cry. Mr. Manager, that is all. I want to tell my brothers. And the second, the Ghanaians in outside, we have chief, we don't have king. 
that king is in Ghana. We are starting a process. Give us five months. They are going to reduce everything. They never say any king of Ghana again. We have one king. The whole Ghana we have one king. It's a tomb for us. We don't have any king. We have chiefs. The Ghanaians in America, Germany, Spain, Holland, they call themselves chief. You cannot have king. The king is the one is coming from that country and is the bigger than all chiefs. That person is called king. The Nigeria don't have king. I don't know why either Ghanaian or Nigeria. Sometimes I'm worried. You people didn't understand English. But <laughs> sometimes you did, I didn't understand you guys. But all the way, we are brothers and sisters too. We're supposed to help each other. The only thing, you guys submit yourself to the lowerness and God can raise you guys. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Manager. Good afternoon and greetings to your listeners. Well, um, this message I'm sending to you, uh, you should not be surprised if you hear it or your listeners should not be surprised if they hear a similar message on another platform. So because uh, I just want to reach a louder, a, a bigger audience so that people will, will, will hear of it. This message is in part for my Ghanaian my Ghanaian brothers and sisters, but it also goes to uh, West African brothers and sisters who are living in in Ghana and those who are also contemplating to to come to Ghana. Uh, it will be good for all of us to educate ourselves, as you have been been saying all the time. Uh, it's about this ECOWAS protocol, uh, which to me I think is being done in a wrong way by our government so the um what do i want to say uh, first of all let's come to europe and see what is happening here in in europe then later we'll talk we we'll transfer it to to our west african sub-region in Europe here, they have the European Union, which was um, which was formed by the Maastricht Treaty. This Maastricht Treaty is the treaty that paved the way for the European currency, the euro that we have at the moment. And then it created the European Union citizenship. This treaty was signed... This treaty was signed uh, on 7th February 1992. So to integrate Europe, the European countries first, they had to reach some level of uh, development in terms of infrastructure. That is, um, they have to, to develop their road networks their transportation, they have to have good health systems, they have to have good security in place. Here, I would like your, your listeners to actually note the word security or underline the word security because uh, this is what I'm going to talk about and I'll come to it. And then those uh, member countries should also create adequate jobs for their own people at home. So this means that uh, a country like Germany should work in the creation of jobs for Germans living in Germany. France will do likewise. Italy will do the same. Uh, Portugal will do the same. Uh, Spain will do the same. Netherlands will do the same. Every country is the duty of every country to create jobs for its citizens at home so that they will get work to do. So the Europeans did not just wake up one day and open their borders to other European citizens, just like, just like that. And even, even now, 
the, the borders are not open to all European countries. The countries in Europe that want to join the European Union, there are certain standards that they should meet. There are certain requirements that those who are non-European uh, members, but they are in Europe and want to join the EU, uh, the EU uh, countries, they have to meet certain standards, certain requirements before they are admitted. A country like Turkey has had their application rejected. Turkey is even a member of NATO, NATO the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, that, that uh, America is, is the head. Turkey is a member of NATO, but not an EU member. Turkey is not an European member. Why? This is because countries like Italy, they put forward an, an argument that Turkey forms a buffer zone, a buffer between Europe and the Muslim world. So if Turkey is admitted, there will be an influx of Muslim fundamentalists that will pose a threat to their security. So what in, 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 in practice, what uh, Italy, Spain, and Portugal, what they were saying is that Turkey is between Europe, forms a bridge between Europe and Asia, that is between uh, the Muslim countries, Syria, uh, Lebanon and, and Iran and Iraq and those countries. So if they admit Turkey as part of, to form part of European Union, when somebody, when a Muslim fundamentalist who want to come and create uh, havoc in Europe here gets to Turkey, it means he has already entered Europe. And so they rejected the application for Turkey. And as at now, Turkey is not a member of the European Union. Even though when you come to Germany, you see a lot of Turkish uh, in Germany. But Turkey is not a member of the European Union. Countries like Switzerland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, they are all in Europe but they do not form part of the monetary union. Then we have countries like Bulgaria, Albania, Macedonia, which are also in Europe, but they are not part of the European Union. This is because they have not reached the standard of development that the EU members have attained. And so for them to be admitted into the European Union, they should reach a certain standard before they, they, are, they are admitted. Now, Croatia joined the Union, I think, last year or two years ago. Croatia is also in Europe, but for so long, it was not part of it. Bosnia and Herzegovina, they are also not part of the EU. But what do we see in, in, in West Africa with this bogus ECOWAS treaty? No country in West Africa has even reached the, the standard, a quarter. No country in West Africa, we should know this, no country in West Africa has even reached a quarter of development the European countries achieved before coming together to form the European Union. We have no good roads, we have no good health system, we have no proper jobs for, for the citizens of member countries in the West African sub-region. Our security system, I, I ask the listeners to actually note the word security because I, I was, I'm now coming to talk about it. Our security system in West Africa is very, is very, very weak. Why am I saying that? Nigeria as a country cannot even defeat their own Boko Haram, causing havoc, causing problems on innocent, innocent citizens in Nigeria. Kidnapping of school children has become a daily occurrence in Nigeria. Now, when we go to the Sahel regions, we have Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali, with uh, jihadists killing people in the Sahel region. 
In the wake of all these insecurities in the West African sub-region, our president, Akufuado, wakes up one morning and opens our, our borders without any proper security system in place to control the influx of people from these crime torn countries coming to, to, to Ghana. The question is who in his right mind, who at all in his right mind will recklessly do such a thing for, 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 for his country? You see, some of these Boko Haram gangs and the jihadist bandits will join those who are trooping into our country daily and unite with the criminals, the, those criminals we have already in Ghana to cause serious problems for us. This is what we should actually be, be, be talking about and be, and be concerned. And this is why some, some, of, some of our people are actually talking about. They are worried and we have the, the right to be worried about such uh, security threats. You see, we Ghanaians are sitting on a time bomb and if we, the citizens, if we do not rise up and do something, uh, huh, we shall be thrown into an endless war, endless civil war that will actually wipe all of us from, from our country, from the soil. You see, these people coming to, to Ghana daily in their thousands, they have destroyed their country. And they are, they are now turning to us to destroy ours for, for, for us. So at this point, it will be wishful thinking to say that Ghana is, is a peaceful country. How? Why is Ghana a peaceful country? We are gathering criminals in our midst and we think we, we have peace. There is no peace anywhere and we are not going to have it until we rise up and do, and, and do something. No one should bury his, his or her head in the sand with, with this notion that Ghana, Ghana is, is, is a peaceful country. No, it's, it's no more a peaceful country. We are sitting on a time bomb. How long will this so-called peace last, last in Ghana when we don't have any system in place to, to control those who are, com who are coming in? You see, when we talk about these things, people label some of us as haters. The question is, who hates who? Why should a Ghanaian hate a Nigerian? Can someone come out to tell me what a Ghanaian can do that a Nigerian cannot do? Or what has a Nigerian done that a Ghanaian has never done before or cannot do? Can someone come out to tell me? So, where from this hate? Why should Ghanaians hate Nigerians? We don't hate anybody. But we are concerned about our security system in, in, in the country. That's why we are complaining. There is no hatred here. Ghana is a third world country. Nigeria is a third world country. And so we have millions of our people who are living below the poverty line. Countless number of our people. When you go in Ghana, when you go to our rural areas, you see Abject, uh, uh, the abject poverty our people are going through it. Ghana is not only Accra and, and Kumasi. Go to our rural areas and you see what is going on there. And so why should Ghanaians hate Nigerians? It's the same thing which is happening in, in Nigeria. And so why should we hate, uh, uh, why should a Ghanaian hate a, a Nigerian? Let, let's stop this thing because it's not going to help in, in anybody. When we go to, when one goes to Silicon Valley in the U.S., you see Nigerians and Ghanaians working there. When you go to the NASA station, the, how do you call it, the Space Administration in the U.S., where they launch these rockets and other things, you will see Ghanaian scientists and Nigerian scientists who are working there. When you go to UK, you see Ghanaian doctors and Nigerian doctors, nurses who are working there. You go to US and Canada, you see Ghanaian lecturers and uh, Nigerian lecturers who are there. And so, uh, who is better than who? And why should we hate, why should a Ghanaian hate a Nigerian? This is some of the, this is a question I would like our Nigerian brothers and sisters who are actually propagating 
this uh, word as saying that Ghanaians hate Nigerians. Should someone come out and tell me why a Ghanaian should hate a Nigerian? This doesn't hold, this argument doesn't hold water, and so we should stop. You see, we have the legitimate right to question our government, to demand good governance from our country, from our respective countries, so that we all will live in peace. The influx of people who are coming to, to, to Ghana and these people who are causing crimes and other things, it's not even good for, for the law-abiding ones who are staying in Ghana. They should be protected. They should have the freedom to go about their businesses, just like the Ghanaians also should be protected and have the freedom to go about their businesses. And so our law enforcement agencies, we should rise up and demand a good deal from them. Our government should do something with these borders. Either they will close it, put certain things in place, and people who are coming in, we take their fingerprints, we take their photographs, and we send them somewhere. We don't just release them on the streets to go and beg. Here in Europe, we have people who come in for to, uh, to seek asylum, refugees who are coming in. Some of our African brothers, you see them on, on TV with these boats from Libya coming in. When they come in, they don't just accept them and then release them on the streets. They are taken and sent to asylum camps. First, they check their health. Then they take their fingerprints. They take their photographs. They register them. They take statements from, from them why they are coming to Europe. Then they keep them in those camps. They don't just release them on the streets to go and beg. So when they have done all this, then they will listen to them one by one. They will book appointments for them one by one. Before later, who, those who are qualified will be given asylum to stay. Those who are not qualified to stay with their case, they will send them back. They don't just, ev they don't just take everybody to, 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 to themselves. You see, how do we know in Ghana, those who are coming in, if these Boko Haram people, they put their gun somewhere and join those people who are coming in? We don't know them. These jihadis who are fighting, uh, Sahelian brothers, the Burkina, the Burkina Bear and uh, the Malians and the Nigerians. If some of them join this group and come to Ghana, how will we know? We don't know them. And so why don't we have, don't we have the right to actually ask our government to do something about these things? We have the right to do that. And we have the right to question the character and motives of people who are coming into our country. Nobody should deny nobody should deny us this this fact or this right. It is our legit our legitimate right as Ghanaians to, to do that. So please let's stop this kind of languages. Uh, Ghanaians hate Nigerians, Ghanaians don't like people and that kind of thing. It's it's not going to help in any one of us. It's not going to help. We've had people from Burkina living amongst us. They even speak our languages, and we've had no problem. We've had some Fulanese who have been living with us. We've never had any problem. We have Avorians who have been with us. As for the Avorians, they are our next door neighbors. They are brothers. They are Akans, and we had no problems. Even Liberians. We have thousands of Liberians in Ghana. George Weah, for example, the president, he, he grew up in Ghana. George Weah, the, the last president of Liberia. This man grew up in Ghana. We don't have any problem with them. And we have Sierra Leoneans too, living in Ghana. And we've had no problems with them. Why should we have problems with Nigerians? It's because of what is going on. What some of them are doing in the country. That's why we are complaining. When we complain, 
some people will come and say there are bad eggs everywhere. Yes, it's true that there are bad eggs everywhere. In Ghana, we have our own, some of our own Ghanaians who are into criminal activities. But the problem is we don't export those crimes to other countries. Those of us who are living outside Ghana, when we see a Ghanaian who is into crime, we give them, we give that person out. Some of, some of us will even call the police for that person to be arrested because we don't want to tarnish the image of our country. And this is what we expect our Nigerian brothers to, to be doing, to be helping us. And I thank some of you guys who are coming out to voice out, some of you uh, brothers and sisters who are coming out daily to voice out these uh, uh, activities. You see, we cannot live in a lawless country. It is not even good for those of you, the law-abiding ones living in the country, to go through uh, uh, lawlessness by some people. It's not good. So, my people, let's come together and demand something from, from, from the government. This Akufuado does not care. He does not care about us. This very man does not care. You see it. Very soon he will be going away. Uh, by 7th January he will be no more. He just came, create confusion and chaos and he's living. It is you and I who should be very vigilant now and do something about the situation. This chaos that Akufuado has created for us. It's not going to help us. This ECOWAS system should be relooked. Or we should actually revisit the, the, the ECOWAS system and then do something about it. We have not developed up to certain levels that we can actually accommodate a whole lot of people. And then he just opens the borders and allows everybody to come in. This is not going to help. Well, I have so much to say, but uh, I have to be careful of my time. So, Mr. Manager, uh, I thank you so much. And I thank your listeners. May God bless you for the good work that you are doing. Bye-bye for now. Mm. Hello, my brother. Good afternoon. And greetings to all your listeners. Well, I've been following your some of your videos and I would like to add my my two pens ideas here yeah this message goes to you the Nigerian lady who always take the uh, the Ghanaians who always talk about South, South Africa then you come and put their, mess, uh, their videos on your page then you are talking about it and you are still saying that Ghana is giving visa free for all Africa can West Africa countries or uh, Africa countries to come to Ghana please stop that your nonsense you are doing you are not a Ghanaian citizen you are from Nigeria and you are making a blogging in Ghana. Don't I don't want me to attack you on social media. You are the one who attack Mr. Manager on his uh, on the social media, telling Mr. Manager that why he has brought that so-called king in Ghana. For we Ghanaians, that we own our land, that that man calls himself king, who has built a palace on our soil. When you came to be insulting Mr. Managers on your platform, haven't you seen what you are doing? Taking Ghanaians who are talking against south africa their videos playing them on your page isn't it 
Please, you are not a Ghanaian citizen. Stop playing Ghanaians who are attacking uh, South Africans, telling their mind on South Africans, bringing their videos on your page, broadcasting it on your page, and also telling Africans that Ghana has given them visa free. So they should come to Ghana. My dear sister, don't let us grow mad on you. Don't let us grow mad on you. Okay? You that Nigerian girl who came to insult Mr. Manager because we have been talking about that so-called Igbo king. You are making nonsense. Please. We are not joking, eh? We are not joking, eh? We haven't finished with you. We are just quiet. We are looking at you. We are just quiet. We are looking at you. Stop that thing that you are doing. Always bringing people who are talking about other countries. Those Ghanaians talking about other countries on your page. Because you are li your people are living in South Africa, they are doing stupid things, committing crimes. When the South Africans are bullying them because of that, anything that Ghanaians are saying to about uh, South Africans, you are bringing those videos on your page. My dear sister, hello, you are not a Ghanaian. You better pack your loads and go to Nigeria and stop that your nonsense you are doing there. What kind of idiotic habitual life have you people, Nigerians, have brought in Ghana? Please, we don't want that kind of things. This is why your country, there is always fight, 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 fight with, with you, the tribes. You see that you are bringing it to Ghana. You see that you are bringing it to Ghana. You want to create a problem to Ghana and uh, uh, South Africa. So you are always tagging South, Af uh, South Africa bad videos from Ghana to them. You see what you are doing? Hey, my dear sister, if you don't take time, me, me, I will silence you. I will silence you. Are you not the, are you not the one who made a video telling we Ghanaians that we, we Ghanaians, we are tribalism? Are you not the one who put the uh, camera on you telling we Ghanaians in Ghana that we are tribalism? And I came to reply you and I, I, I asked you, do you understand what is called tribalism? Do you understand what is tribalism? Are you out of your senses or what? Do we have, do we have culture different? Do we have the same culture or what? Do we have cultural differences with you Nigerians? I, 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 are you out of your senses, please? If I may ask you, are you okay? Hey, look, the country that you said they are tribalism. Now, are they the people that you people want to have the, uh, your festival? You, you, that's your dirty festival in their, on their land? The festival will never come on. Mark it on the wall. It will never come on. It has been stopped this year. It has been stopped this year. It will never. Even that so man called Ibo King, he knows it. He knows it that now it won't happen again. You think we are joking, eh? And you have you have audacity. To put a camera on you to be speaking to Mr. Manager anyhow you like because you think you are living in Ghana now. Look, you will pack your load and go back to Nigeria. You will shock. You will shock. Is that in Ghana you are coming to call yourself Nana? I'm Nana Yasantua, Nana Yasantua. Ghana, you are coming to come. Uh, you are coming there to call yourself. I'm Nana Yasantua. Do you do you think we mention names in vain in, in our country? Eh? Do you know that person? You are mentioning her name. 
Naniyama. Okay, take everybody. My name is Master Manager and again, if you listen to appreciate all of you, if you want to reach out to me, look at my bio, my WhatsApp number is there. Now, Ghana MP, they are afraid of Gade to come after them. <laughs> now they are confessors. Nigeria, I hope you people take action. No Nigerian youth. Uh, so people say they are hungry youth. I don't think that they are, their leader will be afraid of them. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.